What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Built. Uh, we are going to be working on the RX-7 today. I was super stoked to just jump right into it, but um, we had a bit of a problem back home. Chelsea's M5 has a really bizarre uh, split in one of the upper cooling lines. It's like a slice. I don't know where it came from. I'll show you guys all about it when we fix it, but that car is out of commission. So it's back home. Uh, and since I sold so many cars, I don't have as many backups as before. So Chelsea and I drove the FJ to the shop to get the Aston Martin. And then now I'm dailying the Aston Martin and she's dailying the FJ. Um, Chelsea did have another car before the M5 and she's not gonna want me to tell you guys this but she totaled it last week so it was really good that I bought her a new car uh, so <laughs> so Chelsea's driving the FJ now I'm in the Aston Martin only problem with the Aston Martin is the registration expired uh, two months ago so I'm heading down to the DMV right now hopefully I won't get pulled over on the way and I'm gonna finally title and register this car for myself rather than being on a trip permit then I can daily it and we can get back to work again in the shop Just got to the DMV. They're definitely gonna do a vent inspection, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of peeling some tape off of here. I hope the vent's right here. There we go. Got my beer, got my shroud. This is by far the best way to wait in line at the DMV ever. Wow, that got bad fast. Newsflash, the DMV is not a pleasant place. Uh, so there's complications registering the Aston Martin because the DMV here is incompetent and they for some reason think that since the car is from Virginia and it has a salvage title in Virginia, that it can just never be registered ever again on the streets. Which is ridiculous because I register cars from all over the United States on the streets here all the time. So that's all under review and I'm allowed to drive the Aston Martin for the next 90 days, whether or not that goes through, whatever. We'll pick it up later. That was all just really negative. I didn't want to bring you guys into it. So now we're focused back on the RX-7. This is what I wanted to do all day long. So let's jump into it. The idea is we're going to try and pinpoint the things that are wrong and find things that find and figure out things that I need to order. Uh, order the replacements of and get them on their way here because we have a very short time frame You can imagine if something's like a two-week shipping time. I got to order it like today So let's start diving into this car and figure out what the hell we have here and what's wrong This is one of those where do I even start type of questions. I Got cardboard to make a list. I think that'll be long enough just barely I'm just gonna go ahead and start in the front work my way back skipping mechanical stuff for now. Let's look at body work uh, Let's start right here this feels like it's got some texture to it. It actually feels like it could be real carbon fiber. I need to inspect, because if I can't smooth that out to repaint it, then we're gonna need to replace that. This looks like crap and the body line is definitely not right. So let me dive into this area right here, see what I can figure out. This car's electrical has a mind of its own. Uh, so when I first, when I first turned it on to go ahead and flip the lights up, this wasn't happening, but this was what was happening yesterday. And you could see that the keys are out and the car is essentially off and the emergency flashers are just flashing away. I have no idea why that's happening. And when we first started, or we didn't start the car obviously, but when I first attached power, that wasn't happening. And then it just decided to start happening. So I don't know if there's an aftermarket alarm in here that's trying to do weird stuff or whatever. Last night there was a front blinker blinking. Now that's completely stopped. So, so weird. And I thought I saw that headlight on and now the headlight won't work anymore. Uh, but going into over here, this headlight, so, so good news on the headlight front, mechanically, the two headlight motors work, they go up and down. Uh, the, the, the bulb housings and everything look good. And the covers, that one is actually vinyl wrapped, which is really good. And that one is terribly painted, which we can clean. And those two are both intact. So the headlights can go back together to OEM to look and clean once again. So I don't need to order any more parts. So, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bumper off next. I'm gonna detach the battery so that doesn't happen. Optima was kind enough to send me this awesome battery uh, for this project and I, I don't really remember what, what our agreement was but I would like to say thank you very much to Optima for giving me a free battery. That's awesome, link in the description. Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, I, bumper? 
Do I pull off the bumper? I mean, it's barely, it can tell, it's, it's not even really on there that well. Let's go ahead and get the bumper off. I don't know if you guys can tell by looking at the outside of this car, but it's definitely a kind of hodgepodge of whatever the previous owner had laying around to use. And uh, it's got me, got me a little worried. Uh, looking at the headlight bulb over here, this looks like a retrofitted HID thingy. Does not look like it's stock by any means. This thing kind of just comes comes in and out of here as it pleases. Um, <clears throat> that one obviously didn't even have, doesn't even have the wiring harness for the headlight bulb. I gotta dig into there and find that. As I was looking down here, those sets of wires look fine, but then I was looking at the bottom and there's just this random wire that's been pulled out of this uh, bundle right there and it just kind of runs down into nothing. And then under here, there's these weird little two wires that run down to something that's just electrical taped up, a little electrical taped up plug bundle. Um, maybe that was the previous owner trying to kind of eliminate something and, and tidy it up. I'm not really sure, but it's got me plenty worried. Um, so uh, I'm just going to keep going though, front to back, right? And we're going to skip the engine for now because uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, let's go ahead. These fenders are total garbage. I mean, you could see that somebody just, you know, took that and ripped it. Uh, and yeah, they're all broken in the front here and everything else like that. So I, I have, uh, from looking at this car, I know I'm gonna need some new fenders and quickly. So if anybody knows anybody that has some OEM fenders, I'm looking for a set. I'm down to pay about 350 shipped uh, for a pair of OEM fenders if anybody has some. If not, I'll probably have to buy some of these aftermarket fiberglass ones and work with them. But at the very least, these ones are not gonna cut it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take these both off right now. Fenders are off and in the junk pile. Moving on, I got the list updated. There's a lot of stuff around the headlights that we're gonna need to figure out. I like the style of the stock flip up headlights, but I may, depending on how much it costs to, uh, to replace the OEM stuff, I may go with something aftermarket-y, I don't know. Um, now that I can see a lot of stuff that's going on, knowing that this car seems to have some pretty catastrophic weird wiring stuff, I'm just gonna take a couple minutes to start poking around at wiring and fuse boxes. I'm seeing one here and one over there, and uh, I'm gonna do a little discovery period before we get behind the firewall. All right, I looked around at all the fuse box and relay boxes and I didn't know, oh, there's some weird stuff in this relay box right here where this has a relay, radio relay located. It's just this weird bundle of wires right here, and that, Seems to be missing, but I don't know what that is. R E T R A, retra relay. So maybe this car doesn't have a retra. Um, <clears throat> so that's the only things. I located the ballasts for the um, knockoff for the whatever type of bulb that this is. This this hot wired mumbo jumbo uh, on both sides. So I'll be able to then at least track down the hot and uh, ground leads for those two things later on. So. I think that's it. That's where I'm going to leave this. Um, you might have seen me in that clip. I've been texting Rob Dom to try and figure out what's up with that crazy blinkage because it seems that I probably have an aftermarket alarm system and uh, I'd really love to be able to figure out why this car won't start any longer, etc., etc. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into the interior. Hmm. Let me pull everything out and then I'll show you around. Found some toys in the interior. We got another set of fenders. Unfortunately, hard to believe, but these are probably in worse shape than the other fenders. So those are just garbage. They're useless. Interesting that this guy had two aftermarket beat up sets of fenders. It, this car, from everything that I could tell, was not a drift car. Um, I would love for that to be the history on this car, but I don't think it was. I feel like this was more of a really, really cheap, someone trying to be stunting on people and didn't quite pull it off car. Uh, the other thing that I found was like a front lip for the OEM bumper. Actually, it doesn't, doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's, it's broken, so that looks bad, but as far as what it would have looked like on the car, eh, not, not, not terribly bad. Um, I saw there is a box in the trunk and it says Blitz on it. I'm stoked on that. I can't wait to get into that. Um, and these seats, the interior has got a little bit of water damage. 
so I would love to get this car uh, started to dry out and I think a good way to do that is to get these aftermarket seats. So the back is leather. This car was a leather car that I'm finding out. I'm going to put one of these on the list. I need to buy some more of these guys because that looks like crap. Um, but I'm going to see how hard it would be to pull these seats out. I'd love to get the seats out right now. I'm going to go ahead and give it a go. And then as a treat, I'll let myself in the trunk. Let's hope the trunk opens. Cool, we got the seat out without much trouble and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the seat was bolted onto this uh, FD seat rail system. I don't know if this is an aftermarket seat rail or what. Uh, everything has a lot of corrosion on it that I'm gonna have to go ahead and clean up, but you know, it won't be a big problem. The seatbelt sensor was unplugged. I don't know if that was, you know, modified or something to not bug the person anymore. But that's a working seat rail and we will go ahead and have to, we'll, we'll bring that along, keep that with the build. This is gonna be garbage. This is a bride seat that was, it's too small. It's totally waterlogged and it's clearly broken, like rusted into pieces. So that's garbage. We'll go ahead and trash that. Uh, moving on to the interior. Uh, it actually, you know, looks pretty good. We don't have any huge gaps in the carpet. I don't know what that is with the staples in it, but we'll learn. Only concerning thing is wires coming out of nowhere land. So there's this wire right here. I have no idea where that came from. And then this other wire right here kind of seems to run into this piece. Um, so that's strange. Uh, I want to go ahead and pop, probably pop this off. Yeah. And then I'm going to get that other seat out. I'm going to pop these off and get another seat out. Wait. What? Yeah, I should. Okay. Hey, let's 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 do thinking with Christopher. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take that off so I can see what's going on with that wire. Then I'll take the other seat out, and then we can get in the trunk. Try and figure out what's in there. That seat had a lot of moisture in it, so I'm really hoping we're not gonna have a ton of mold problems. I don't know what all this like white stuff is. I think that, I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm hoping it's not mold. So we're gonna really try and dry the car out the best we can. While we're on the subject of all the things that are wrong with this car, the list is really too far to go down. I wonder what's in here. Couple weird clippy things, probably save those. Some double-sided tape things and a fuse, great. What was the person before me doing with this car? Um, so in here there was a fire, mild fire. Uh, probably caused by smoking, uh, burnt up the little rubber part of the shifter booty. So I'm hoping that I could just fix that by replacing the rubber part of the shifter boot and then getting a new cloth boot on there. Uh, the steering wheel airbag seems to have ran away with somebody else. The rear view mirror is uh, screwed up somehow. It's got some weird fungi inside it. Uh, there's a sticker right there that says 10, so I'm really hoping that possibly this car was registered as late as 2010, which would mean that it's only been off the road for like eight years, which actually starts to really make sense when you look around. Uh, and the last thing, but not least, is the entire dashboard does not function. None of those gauges work, so that that's tough. Fan controls work though and stuff like that. So that's the interior. Let's see what's in this box back here. Pull or push, okay. Well, that certainly works. This will be really fun to fix all these dents. Smells just like Japan. Do they really get American protein bars in Japan with American writing? Or did somebody in America eat a candy bar in my car and leave the wrapper in my trunk? What's going on here? We need to get the cover for the rear hatch. That's the thing. Ooh, what is this? That looks like a motor thing. But what is a motor? Oh, <laughs> the wiper. Okay, the moment has come. Looks like it suspension that was my guess this car has coilovers this is probably all the stock suspension that was on it yep not as exciting as i thought that's the right type of writing there we go what else do we have here japanese birth control or bubble gum it's always hard to tell a little bit of gum and japanese parliaments Probably the reason there was a uh, hole burned in that shifter. All right, now that's kind of the state of the car. Now it's time to start fixing things. Now it's time to build, now it's time to build a dream car. 
we have an interesting we have an interesting base. This is the cracker upon which we will build an amazing appetizer. What? This is the taco shell. That's what it is. Oh, soon we're going to have meats and cheeses. So I'm a little bit stuck on where to get started with this. I can't make up my mind on which angle to approach first. So right now, when I connect the battery, what's most likely gonna happen is the emergency flashers are gonna go off. That, the background on this is that is kind of a new development, but also a new development is it stopped running. The engine stopped running. Now it tries to start, it's turning over, whatever that means in a rotary, it's turning around, but it's not actually kicking on and running on its own. A long time ago when this first got uh, delivered, I moved it just one parking spot over in the driveway and was actually able to, you know, turn it on. I had, it was running really, really rough. I kept the RPMs up and I was able to actually move it one parking spot. After that, it, it actually, while it was running, it completely puttered out and died like a car that's running like too rich died and uh, would never start again. But then really quickly after that, this emergency blinker thing happened. The horns started going off. It was chaos. So kind of like the sound of that bus's brakes, Jesus Christ. So, um, now, the alarm system could have tripped and said, all right, no more spark going to the engine, so you get no more engine and you're gonna get no more start. That could have been a thing. And to do that, there would have to be an aftermarket alarm, most likely, or I guess a stock alarm. Or it could have been that the engine is so foobarred that it doesn't wanna run. Now, this engine is probably sitting with a tank full of eight-year-old gas, which I should have drained before I even got started. So I think I got two options. One is start looking at electrical, hunt down, let's figure out things like, is it a stock ECU still? Uh, is there an aftermarket alarm system? And that type of stuff. Or the other thing is just drain the tank full of gas, go get some more gas, go get some new gas, put it in here, and try and give it a crank. I'm thinking I might have time to do both tonight. Now this guy was so bad at wiring that he's leaving signs of any project that he did with wiring laying around everywhere. They're, it's very evident. I could probably start tracing these wires back and see where they go to and other things like that. So actually I've decided right while I was talking, let's jump into this hole right here, start tracing wires back. I'm going to be looking for two things, an aftermarket ECU or an aftermarket alarm system. If I don't have either of those, I'm going to jump onto the forums and Google the whole power on, flashers on type of issue, see if anything comes up there. Okay, we found out some interesting things, some good, some bad. Um, the, the previous owner did a lot of teeing into different wires down here, and I'm not really sure the purpose of what he was doing, but you could see uh, right here he teed into a fuse. Um, over here is another hot wire that he had teed up before. Up here, there's a tee off of something that was running into the dash, and I don't know where this new wire uh, runs off to. Looks like a lot of this wiring right here is his own stuff and it kind of goes into these two different bundles um, that go behind behind here. So pulling the dash is definitely something that we're going to be looking at doing. Uh, so that's the negative side of things. Positive side of things is right over here we have the stock ECU and a few wires had been previously teed into but nothing is now. So maybe they you know ran a piggyback off of it or uh, ran a MAF clamp or something like that. But right now, it's all good. It's just stock wiring, stock ECU from the looks of it. So that's a good sign. That's what we wanted. All right, that wraps up work for tonight. I got the new shop heater blowing kind of directly through the car. Hopefully that'll dry some stuff out. I've been Googling and I've learned some pretty, uh, some pretty good stuff about why those flashers could be going off and I'm pretty positive they're completely unrelated to the car not starting because I don't think there's a real alarm system in there. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. For now, I gotta go meet up with Adrian and Chelsea. You've gotta be kidding me. I get to where I'm going, and now car's off, and the emergency blinkers are going off on both sides. Is every car that I own just gonna freaking lose its mind today? How am I gonna get this to shut off? Okay, that's one car fixed. I hopped in and just uh, hit the uh, flashers on and off, and it stopped. Maybe it'll be that easy on the RX-7. I'll try that tomorrow. So if you haven't figured out, we go play trivia on Wednesdays. We got the crew. 
we kind of have the, the, the small crew, but you small should crew. recognize everybody. We were just walking out though, and we caught somebody cheating, and it was just like, well, a lot of people are cheating. We don't really want to report them, but it's kind of lame. Like, <laughs> why? There's a little bit of money at stake, but it's not really worth it. I think we need to drink a responsible amount, keeping in mind that we have to drive home. It's not even hard. I'm not even. Here's the name, the common actor, and all the three terrible films. So, question number one, we have Alright, eighth place, we have Dick Diganall. Seventh place, we have Sonny Olives. Sixth place, we have Team. We're back from trivia. Here's the horns. Comments say that you like, you guys like the horns? I don't know. We're back at Chelsea's house. So, trivia got weird. Um, how do I explain this? So clearly there was a team that was cheating, and uh, they were really clearly cheating. We even caught it on film, them cheating. They were cheating when we walked out, and they were cheating when we walked back in 10 minutes later. So uh, normally we wouldn't say anything, because who cares, whatever. It's a friendly game of trivia, even though there is like 50 bucks for first place. We ended up getting fifth in the end. Uh, the team that was cheating uh, actually ended up getting first, so we had to report them because just winners can't be cheaters, okay? If you want to get second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever, we would have let them cheat and just be quiet about it. But... Come on, we're gonna call you out if you're gonna get first, because that's bullshit. So we technically got fourth, not fifth, because first place should have been disqualified. Um, that was really fun. So tomorrow, I'm gonna attack the car. We're looking at the, the fuel, the, the, well, so I'm thinking about the fuel, getting the old fuel out of the car, getting some new fuel in it, seeing how it's run. Maybe we're, I'm gonna do some research tonight about how to replace spark plugs. And I'm, I'm thinking that the flashers thing has to do with the actual flasher unit, because I hear that the window power signal actually goes through the flasher unit. It's an F100 like circuitry board thing. I found one on eBay, it's 260 bucks and it won't be here for another two weeks if I do decide to buy it. But I'm pretty positive that that has something to do with all the craziness that we have going on. So um, it's very interesting stuff. So tomorrow I'm gonna attack electrical and engine and I'm gonna try and get the thing running. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to have a uh, will it run title on tomorrow's episode, but Anyways, this was my first one doing like uh, doing a quick daily. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me. And uh, even though I spent three and a half hours at the DMV, I think we still got some good work done. So this is the idea. I'm having fun. That's about it, guys. Normally, I'd say, you know, head over to bsforbuild.com if you want to support. But obviously, uh, we're sold out of damn near everything until we get the next line of uh, RX-7 merch coming. If you guys have any um, fun memes that you want for the RX-7 stuff, let me know. I was thinking B is for Brodery, but that maybe not. I don't know. B is, B is for, yeah, B is for Brodery. I like it. We can make, Chelsea likes it. We can make the O like a, 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 ro a rotor. Anywho. Even better. And um, please support our sponsor. The sponsor for this entire series is JDM Buyer. It is the best source for importing JDM parts. And uh, I got a lot of emails about importing cars themselves, the prices and the, and the time and the everything like that. Head over to RB Motoring. That is their partner company, rbmotoring.com. And the links to both of those are in the description. If you guys are interested, hit them up. And thanks to them for sponsoring this build series. And that's about it, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Come, come, come.